All right, what's up guys? We are watching an onboard right now from NJMP. This is a coaching day I did with our friend Pete. He uh, brought me on board to try and help him just be a little bit faster, obviously, and also safer because he hasn't rode in over a year. So um, this is just, we're getting ready right now. Got my MotoGP gloves left over from 2019. At this point in the day, I was still riding my Triumph 765's Moto2 edition. Um, <clears throat> as you can see on the triple clamps, it's uh, the limited edition one. Uh, later on in the day, I wanted to ride in his other R1. Uh, he has a backup R1. And he was like, Yeah, I just ride this. I rode that. That thing was sweet. The Triumph's cool too, but um, obviously not quite as fast as an R1. And I'm getting used to that big boy power on the uh, super bikes, but. Um, here we go, just headed out on the track right now. Just turning right out of the pit lane here at NJMP. Uh, this is just a uh, the Riders Club track day um, here at New Jersey. It's our local track. Well, it was, I just moved to Florida, but um, at least on the pit lane, I'm sure they love that. Um, if I remember correctly, this day wasn't too busy. It wasn't overly busy, which is great. Um, but yeah, we are headed out now through this little chicane section. Um, you can see Pete already setting up these corners ready to go. He's not playing around. Um, yeah, just always look back when you're coming over turn two, going onto the track, to make sure nothing's coming. And uh, I try to not go wide into the chicane. I try to just stay low and enter the chicane low. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, we're getting right into it. This is the exit of 3C up over Wheeling Hill. Usually I kind of swerve over really hill to uh, keep the front wheel down before tipping it into turn four. It's really fast at four. Um, one thing that we were working on, me and Pete, was not swinging out too wide for turn four to cut back. Um, just kind of entering turn four where you exit. Entering turn five where you exit turn four. Sorry. Um, and we fixed that and then through turn six, which is what we just went through, we were working on getting our eyes up, getting back to the gas. And, he did a really good job at that throughout the day, and we got better and better through those two sections. Um, here, you can kind of run a variety of lines through this last long right-hander at the JMP. It's such a wide corner and such a long corner, you can kind of run wherever you'd like. Through 10, we are hugging 10 a little bit tight on this lap in particular, where he's just kind of running around the bottom of the corner, which is uh, it's good when you're racing, but um, at a track day or a qualifying session, you would want to open up the corner a little bit to square it off and get a better drive. Um, we're on the front straight now. Pete was braking a little bit early. As you can see, I close in quite a bit on the brakes. Um, obviously, I'm just I'm rolling around just trying to point out little areas in my own head where we can make some improvements for the next session. Pete had a really good line to turn two on that lap, which was uh, nice to see. We were working on the first section for the first half of the day, and then second half of the day we worked the second half of the track so uh, this will be when we were working more on the first half of the track and the second half of the track was kind of an afterthought it was just wherever we end up on the track we're just getting through that section and then working on the beginning half um, again good entry into five that time I think that's a, a reasonable entry we could have been a bit closer to the curb on the apex but um, yeah it's just it's an improvement it's chipping away so um, nice corner speed this lap through six kind of missed Apex a little bit and had to turn on the exit, which is not what we want, especially on 1000, but... Um, see, where I'm at, I kind of square this up a little bit more so you can drive a little bit harder through that long right, and then break a little bit more straight up and down before hitting this Apex. Um, that's kind of what uh, my thought process is going through there. And then out of that right into the left, I kind of square it up and just gas, like, rah! I don't break again into the left, but off the off the throttle, rolling in there. Um, under this last one, you should be wide open, full gas, fifth gear usually, um, fourth and fifth gear. Depends how you have your bike set up. If it's a five speed or a six speed, but I usually run a six speed, so um, fifth gear wide open, then I click sixth on the exit. Um, turn two is blind, so it's really uh, hard to get a reference up there, but I usually use the cone on the inside and I know when my angle to the cone is, is the same, that that's, that's when I'm going to get a good drive. Uh, harder to do on a Moto America weekend, you kind of just got to trust yourself because there's no cones, but 
yeah. Over the hill, see I'm not swerving, so things moving. Tipping at four, Pete ran a little bit wide on the entry on this lap. Um, again, I think he set up turn five pretty good. Just still didn't get to think fully slowed down and hit that apex to then stand the bike up and drive it off the corner, which is something that we need to work on with Pete. But uh, this was our first day riding together, and it was his first day after I think he said two or three years of not riding. So um, he's looking pretty pretty sharp for not riding in a couple years. Uh, here you can see again I kind of set up this long turn nine pretty wide and then drive to the brake zone, whereas Pete kind of just hangs on the edge of the tire and just rolls on, rolls on, rolls on, and then never gets the full throttle. Um, here, again, you see me running a little wide and square up this exit of turn 10 to this S section under the bridge before the last corner. Um, we're just trying to hold that speed that we got from our good drive out of turn 10. And, um, Pete's kind of holding on to turn 10 a little bit too long before flipping through the S's. Here you see again on the brakes, I see there's some lap traffic coming up, so we're not, uh, we're not pushing it too hard on the brake zone. Um, this is another thing that I see people all the time in track days. They uh, don't fully know like how to pass or where to pass without making it a little sketchy sometimes. You can see here Pete's looking, looking like he wants to make the pass, but doesn't know where he's going to do it yet. So, um, in my opinion, especially on 1000, it's always better square the person up in front of you, get a better drive off the corner, pass them safe, pass them on the throttle, not on the brakes, because on the brakes is where you're going to make a lot more mistakes. Like, you go up the inside of somebody and you're deep and you just tuck the front right into them at a track day. It's not a, not a good look, so we're, uh, I'm always looking to set passes up at track days off the corner, where if I can get a run on them off the corner, pass them to the next corner, that's what I'd rather do. Definitely a lot safer than uh, a dot on the people at a track day on the brakes. Um, and judging the people's speed is kind of difficult as well. Just not knowing where people are going to go, how fast they're going to enter some corners, because people at track days, the skill level varies so much. Obviously, racing is different, but um, we go see Pete squared him up a little bit in that corner. And I thought he was going to try and square him up a little bit here. Um, see, I would have I tried to have been halfway up alongside the guy at the apex of 10 and drove uh, around the outside of that next ride which is pretty much what Pete did, but I just would have been a little bit closer when I did it, just so I know I got it done. Just see me wait until the straightaway just to get around and just uh, make it as safe as possible for all of us. Um, and yeah, we are nearly done with this session, I believe. Now I've got a little bit of a gap to catch up to Pete, so I'm just gonna be hitting my marks. I know I'm pretty good for a second here. <laughs> Thought it was Middle America qualifying for a second. <laughs> This section got so bumpy through the whole 3A, B, C section here at the JMP. Coming through 3C, I kind of get a turn done and then stand up over those bumps and then turn again after because it's just that sketchy. So, um, there's something to think about when you're rolling through there at track day. Um, Trying to reduce the lean angle over those bumps so you're not hanging out on the side of the tire with the thing moving all around underneath you. It. It's, it's a little bit safer and a little bit uh, smoother to go over them. Clean through six that time, just rolled right through it. The dramas. Coming up on some more lap traffic. Um, like I said, that track day is just be safe when you're passing people because a lot of the people there don't know where each other are going and everybody's looking around and nobody knows what's going on. So it's uh, definitely the safer thing to do to just wait a second instead of dive bombing people. But um, that's our session done with uh, from NJMP. Let me know what you guys think of these kind of videos. I don't know, I was kind of debating doing it or not, but I seen Sovan Gintoli did it and it looked sick. So I uh, definitely got the inspiration from him and uh, he does some pretty cool videos. So I thought that this would be a sick way to go and uh, explain what we're doing on the track when we're doing it. This is, like I said, a coaching session, but I'm gonna have some other videos from like uh, test days where there's other fast guys and, and stuff like that and private practice of, of myself. So. Um, I just think it's a cool angle and a, a cool little um, inside look that people don't usually get. So um, if this is your first time watching one of my videos, go leave a comment, like this video and subscribe. That's what helps us grow. That's what's going to make more videos like this in the future. So um, yeah, I appreciate all y'all's support and uh, I'll see y'all in the next one.